My name is Zara Jimaboy. I'm a curator, writer, and art historian specializing in modern and contemporary South Asian art. I completed my PhD from the Courtauld Institute of Art in London in 2017, and it focused on Indian art and its intersection with um, nationalism. Based on this thesis, I guess curated an exhibition called The Progressive Revolution, A Modern Art for a New India at the Asia Society Museum in New York in 2018. It was focused on the famous Progressive Artist Group, which was founded in Mumbai in 1947, just after the partition of the subcontinent and the formation of Indian independence. Its mission was to forge a new art for this new secular republic. Today, I'm going to focus on one of its founding members, arguably its most famous founding member, M.F. Hussein, and his painting from 1951, Man. M.F. Hussein was born in 1915 in Pandapur in Maharashtra, famous for its Vishnu temples, to a Shia Muslim family. He was very poor and started his career in Bombay making toys for a furniture company called Fantasy and painting cinema hoardings. Both of these influences, as well as Hussein's multi-religious childhood, can be seen in man. So what's so special about it? And why am I focusing on man? For one thing, man is one of the two paintings by Hussein that has been much discussed in the last year. The other is Zameen from 1955. But Zameen has been on show at the Venice Biennale last year, and it can be seen quite easily at the National Gallery of Modern Art in Delhi. Whereas Man is at the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, Massachusetts, and it's only recently been restored so that it can be seen by visitors to the museum when it opens its doors after COVID. It will be the highlight of the new hang at the Chester and David A. Hurwitz collection by the new South Asian curator there, Dr. Siddhartha Shah. So this is just a sneak peek of the delights in store for us when you go, and if you go, to meet man in person. Man, of course, to, belongs to one of the most celebrated points in Hussein's career, the 1950s. And for art historians like the Delhi-based Geeta Kapoor, I often call her the grand mummy of modern Indian art history, it is the most important work in his oeuvre. Kapoor says, I propose that man allegorizes a theme more epic than any of Hussein's other works, dealing demonstrably with epics, myths, civilization, and history. Today, let's look at why. So if we examine man, at the dead center of the canvas, we see a black figure sitting in the pose of Rodin's thinker. On the left, we see a bull and a falling figure. These figures have often been interpreted as um, Lord Shiva and his vehicle, the bull Nandi. On the far right is what, what could be a dancing girl or a goddess, and we can see that her hand is upturned. So this painting, I will argue, is the very embodiment of a secular republic, much like Nero's Republic Day parades, which included folklore, tribal dances, and a multicultural slice of the peoples of a new India. Now, when Western art historians, like um, the Peabody Essex's uh, previous curator Susan Bean, or art critic Gemma Sharp, discuss man, they compare the styles with the cubist motifs of a Picasso and point out that this painting is a symbol of Hussein's international modernist agenda. And they compare the central figure, of course, as we know, to Rodin's thinker. However, I will argue that while we do see similarities in terms of the blocky cubist shapes and bold colors here, which we can compare with the styles of modernist architecture, such as Luca Bouzier's Chandigarh, and Picasso's synthetic cubism, such as in The Three Musicians from 1921. In fact, what makes man special is the blending of these Western motifs with Indian civilizational ones from multiple religions, time frames, and styles. So in 1948, Hussein went to an exhibition called Masterpieces of Indian Art, and it was organized as a parting gift by the British, one of the few nice ones. Um, and it started in the Royal Academy in London in 1947 and wound its way by 1948 to Delhi's Viceroy's Lab, Lodge. 
Containing art and artifacts from over 5,000 years of Indian history, it changed Hussein's life and, of course, his art. He said, I saw all the Indian works and then I felt I should paint something else. Till then, I was influenced by the Expressionist. After visiting the exhibition, I combined three periods, the form of the Gupta period, the strong colours of the Bashali period, and the innocence of folk art, and worked on it. And in man, we can see all of these influences. The hot colours of Bashali painting, which is a kind of Pahari painting from the Punjab hills that reached its high point in the 17th century on the outskirts of the Mughal Empire. The figures on the tablet that the central man clutches look very much like Gupta sculpture. And of course, the man himself is he an artist, a magician, a figure from folklore. If we go deep into man, we find a hand. And this is the hand I want to zoom in on now. So art historian Sonal Kolar says of the hand of Zameen, the hand, and I quote, symbol combines references to Le Corbusier's open hand, a symbol of modernist Chandigarh and Norovian India, and the panja associated with saintly or gifted individuals, a symbol of traditional knowledge and folk religious belief. If we look closely at man's hand, it functions similarly. And I would argue in an even more amplified register. The hand could be a nod to Nehru's new capital for the Punjab, Chandigarh, built by Le Corbusier, which has as its signature attribute, planned from 1948, by the way, though not completed until much later, the open hand sculptor. But it could also be the hand of the Panjadan Pak the five holy people of Islam that is used in the thazias of the Shia Muram processions that Hussein loved as a child. Or it could be the Abaya Mudra, a yogic pose. So if man is a metaphor for the new Indian citizen, a secular multi-religious metaphor, which merges all the new, the modern with tradition, east and west, then the multi-symbolic hand is a metaphor for Hussein's modernist man. In this painting, we witness Nehruvian secularism raising its hand to say hello. In today's turbulent times, will we raise us back?